What's going on Legionnaires and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And for this video, we're going to be jumping into Noctera issue number 4. And if you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead and check out the link in the description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on in this line. Now this is Scott Snyder's indie comic being published by Image Comics. And the art is by Tony Daniel and Tamu Mamori. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so as we get into this issue, like most of the previous issues, it drops us into the past. Showing us the, the early days of when the big PM happened. And on day 3 of the big PM, people realized that the key to surviving was keeping things lit. On day 4, federal refugees, they were given camps all over the country to try to consolidate as many people as possible. And so the news up to this point was telling everybody if they can, if it is possible, they need to make their way to one of these shelters. But if they couldn't, the military was going to be making sweeps up and down the streets and hopefully... Hopefully they can be picked up, they can be found. And so they found every single light they could, and they put it on the yard. They make it to where it would be very obvious that they're found. Lights leading all the way up to the doorway, so that way only, only someone good could be able to come in. Or at least somebody that's not one of the monsters, that's not one of these shades. But it didn't take long for the news to start reporting that all of these shelters, they, they were slowly, they were falling. They were being overrun by shades. And not long after that, the news stopped completely. And so after only six days, there was never another broadcast after that day. And so Val, being the oldest, makes the decision that they need to start moving. They need to pack up what things they have, and they need to go find some kind of shelter. And we have to remember that their parents, they're currently down in the basement. Their parents have turned to shades. Or at least the transformation has begun. And so they've been locked down there, and Amori really doesn't want to leave. You know, he, he wants to stay and wait for the military to arrive, hoping that they come and rescue them. And as they're discussing what the best option to do here is, we hear the parents talking from the basement door. And they're talking in some kind of odd language that's not audible to humans. At least in the way that it's not making sense. And as they're sitting here arguing back and forth on the, what, what the best course of action for them is going to be, this is when the power goes out. All the lights turn off. And this is where Val tries to tell him, tries to try to have him understand that there's nobody coming for them. This is it. This is the end. This is them having to fend for themselves. What happens next depends on, on their survival, what they do next. All dictates on what happens, on the choice they make right here and now. They could stay here and try to wait for somebody and eventually have their parents be able to break through those doors because they're getting stronger as they turn into these shades. But M is fully convinced that somebody is going to be coming to the rescue if they just wait a little bit longer. And that's what will bring us to present day. And we see M turning slowly into a shade. It's taken over a good majority of his body at this point, and he doesn't have that much longer before he is completely taken over, before the transformation takes full hold of him and right now they're trying to make their way trying to make their way to tipton as soon as they get there they're going to have to be looking for for one of these solar lamps now the solar lamp is a very bright uv blast that keeps the shades at bay not only that but it can also help reverse sickness and so that seems to be their only option in being able to save him and at this point, his transformation is so severe, we're not even sure if he's going to be able to come back from this. But this is when they arrive at the gates of Tipton. Now, if we remember from the previous issues, the news was that Tipton had been overrun by human shades. And as they arrive here, as they go through the gates, they see this place in utter chaos. There's no bodies, no people, there doesn't seem to be any kind of shades whatsoever. Now usually, usually the reason they're not going to be seeing any other kind of shades is because human shades scare off all the others. They seem to be the, the alpha predator when it comes to the shade hierarchy. But there are always little scavengers, little coyote shades that end up making their way after the massacre has already happened, trying to find whatever is left over. And that's exactly what we see here. We see a giant shade pop up from the ground 
and attack the two. And Val wastes no time bringing up her pistol and putting one right between it. And so now they're going to have to move fast. There's going to be other shades making their way here. They need to try to find this solar lamp and get out of here before it's too late. And so they go searching Hildil's little laboratory, if you will. And going through this, they're actually able to find it. A small tube-like cylinder, and they grab the keys, they go to the rig, and open the back hatch up. And opening this hatch up, Amori immediately attacks them, because most of the shade has already taken him over at this point. But this is when Val, she lifts up the lamp, and blasts him with light. So much light that it, it puts the shade into remission, at least temporarily. And he tells Val that he's still battling. He's still battling with the voices inside of his head. And so this buys him just a little more time. A little more time to th for them to get to this place they're calling the Sanctuary. Because at the Sanctuary, they say they have actual sunlight. And right now, they have no other choice but to head in that direction. Because when they got into a fight with, with Blacktop Bill, his harpoons hit the, hit the truck and it drained the batteries. Not only did it drain them, but it aged them about 10 years. So these batteries are about done. This truck is about to go offline. They, they, they believe they can really only make it to Sanctuary, and after that, they're going to be on their own. And so with this knowledge, they both decide that this is going to be their best course of action. Being about 100 miles out, this is their last stretch. And so with that, they charge up what they can, and they head off. Taking off down the road, we pick up with them as they're arriving close to Sanctuary. But this is when the batteries finally start to fail on them. And the whole rig, it goes offline. The lights seem to still be operating, but the engine is no longer turning over. So they only got a couple hundred meters here left at this point. And so they're going to have to walk the rest of the way. And so we see the two get out of the vehicle, but keeping the lights on on the rig. Helping kind of guide them and where they're going. But the lights only have so far of a radius. And as these two end up walking through a field, they find no buildings, they find no shelter, they find no sanctuary. And so, confused and not understanding where this place is, they go to check the coordinates again, but this is when they hear rustling off to the sides. And the entire tree line lights up with glowing red eyes. And we see Val pull out her pistol, and she starts firing away as tons and tons of shades make their approach and start attacking them. Now, Bailey, she doesn't have a weapon. The only thing Bailey actually has is a slingshot. And so Val is doing her best to be able to protect her, but, but there's so many of them. They're swarming in on them. And Val, she ends up popping some smoke, doing her best to take down as many as she can on her way over to Bailey. But this is when all of the shades disappear. They all read, they all run off, they all retreat. Now, there's only one reason the shades would ever retreat their prey. And that's because a bigger shade has come to mess with them. More specifically, a human shade. And this is when we hear the woodline start talking up a storm and whatever kind of language that the human shades have been speaking in. And Val tells Bailey to just close your eyes. Close your eyes because you're not going to want to see what's about to happen. And in that moment, before the shades attack, we see a hatch open. A hatch open, and from it comes Gus's brother. Comes Tiberius. And Val lets us know in these last moments... You know, that, that day with her brother, the day that she remembers so fondly where she let her brother choose what they were going to do. The last time they ever, they ever really allowed each other to kind of control the power. From then on, Vale was always in charge. But in that moment, she, she let Amori decide what was about to happen. And as they sat there waiting, their parents eventually broke out. They broke out of the basement. Simultaneously, a man came, come barging through the door to save them. And she can't help but remember that moment right now as Tiberius reaches out his hand and welcomes them to Sanctuary. Now, after all of the light scattered the shades, Bailey and her got a Mori, and together they went with the man down into the caves. And as they went down in the caves, she, she was worried about all the skepticism that she's had through this entire ordeal, hoping that there may be some sliver of hope at the end. And this is when she saw something that defied all of her beliefs. 
something that she hasn't seen in over 13 years. This is when she sees a ray of sunlight. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Personally, I've been having tons of fun with this line. I've been thoroughly enjoying what Scott Snyder is doing out on the independent market. And this story is absolutely phenomenal. I'm really hoping that we get some more, some more stuff with the shades. You know, we're being, we're being in the light quite a bit. And Blacktop Bill, you know, he seems to be working for somebody else. He seems to have somebody above him. And they're trying to stop whatever, whatever it is Tiberius and Gus had going on at the sanctuary. That seems to be the end goal here. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.